Hey. Don't cry, Kathy. Chair. How much is this? Fifty dollars. What's going on here? I'll give you thirty. Oh, but it costs two hundred. I'll give you thirty-five. That's all it's worth. You can't sell my chair. All right, thirty-five. Why are you selling my chair? But this is robbery. Don't let him do this. Oh, I keep forgetting. She doesn't even know I'm here. Nobody does. And yet, it was only a few weeks ago, in this very room, it all started. Oh, John! Mm-hmm. John. Yeah. Oh, this letter from Mother. She wants us to come up there this weekend. This weekend? Mm-hmm. She can't get the money she wants from Brubaker for the property. And she knows that you can. But we're going to be up there in a couple of weeks on our vacation anyway. I hate to make that long extra trip now. I know, but Brubaker yeah, won't wait for two oh, weeks. I want to play with it in the backyard. Well, I'm going to play with it. Tom Avery, you give me that. Oh, you, you... Mommy, Kathy. I'm going to phone Mother and tell her we're coming up there. All right. Hey, are we going to see Grandma? Yeah, it looks like it. Goody, goody, catch it. You two kids, get that ball out of here right now. Yes, them. Come on, Tommy. Hey, we'll go play in the backyard. Oh, I know it's 250 miles. Each way. This would be my busiest time. We're installing phones in that new subdivision. And they all want service right away, if not sooner. And this safety program is taking a lot of time, too. Why do you have to spend so much time on that? To make sure that our people know the value of safe driving. Hey, which reminds me, I've got to find a day soon where I can take my own driver refresher course. You mean you have to take driving lessons? Every employee who drives a telephone company vehicle gets defensive driver training as well as refresher courses. Are you sure they all know what defensive driving is? Well, I hope so. We try to impress upon them that a defensive driver is one who makes allowances for the lack of skill and a lack of knowledge on the part of the other fellow, who recognizes that he has no control over the unpredictable actions of another driver or of pedestrians or the condition of the roads or of the weather, and who therefore develops a defensive attitude toward those hazards. Sounds very sensible. But what in the world is this thing for? I haven't named it yet. But it's to use in one of our driver classes if uh, they want it. You see, the three C's of defensive driving are concentration, control, and courtesy. <laughs> I told Woody about this idea I had to illustrate concentration, and he asked me to work it up for the class. You see, what I'm trying to prove is that driving is a full-time job. When you start looking through that windshield, you've got to concentrate on what you're doing. You mustn't think about the time or how hungry you are 
Oh, I get it. Or don't worry about money. Or uh, what you're going to do on your vacation. That's the idea. And you must not get irritated. And you mustn't uh, think about some redhead. Oh. What about that one? Redheads, blonde, same thing. The one you have at home, I mean. Listen, I know what I've got at home, kiddo. I know when I'm well off. I must warn Woody about that when he uses his poster tomorrow. And that's a big one. Family problems. Personal problems. You just can't be worrying about problems and concentrate on your driving at the same time. Yes, Ted? How are you going to help it? Everybody's got problems. Well, they can be job problems, too, like a storm knocking out a cable. Those are things that you're bound to think about. All right. I'll give you a problem to think about as a driver, and it's a real problem. We believe that the vast majority of accidents happen because drivers are thinking about something else besides their driving. Well, I, I still don't see what we can do about it. Well, we have to try. Do you have any ideas, John? Well, I think we have to be realistic about it. No matter what we tell them, drivers are still going to think about other things besides driving. That's for darn sure. I think if we try to develop safe driving habits and concentrate on them while we're driving, then we'll be much better off. Right. And one of the best driving habits you can learn is to keep a buffer zone, a space cushion, all around your moving vehicle. Now, for example, let's say you're going at 20 miles an hour on, in two-way traffic with cars parked along the side of the street. Your buffer zone should look like this. This two-car length of protective space in front and in the rear of your car gives you a safe stopping distance with good brakes on dry pavement. And remember, when any other car moves into your buffer zone, you should take defensive or evasive action promptly. This one car length allowed for each 10 miles of your driving speed will provide you with seeing space so that the actions of the drivers around you can be observed in time to keep out of trouble. It provides you with space to see ahead to a traffic light or a Something like a double parked car. You know, you can't see things like that if you're uh, bumper chasing another car. It also provides you with thinking time so you can make the right decision about the conditions around you. And it provides action time so that you can come to a quick, sure stop or take whatever other action is necessary in order to avoid an accident. That's why we have these refresher courses, including our road test this afternoon just to make sure we're not slipping into any unsafe habits. All right, now let's set up a problem on the traffic board. Here we have a car going east and uh, one of our installer trucks heading north. The intersection is unmarked, neither way is a stop street. Both cars reach the intersection at the same time. Now, which car has the right of way? Denny? The car on the right always has the right of way. The rest of you agree with that? Hanley? Not if you're a defensive driver. Would you care to explain that? In a situation like this, when there's any question about so-called right-of-way, we have to remember that in our company, we always give the right-of-way, never take it. In other words, you practice courtesy. Right. It's one of the three C's of defensive driving. All right, now let's make a switch. It's the same driver, but instead of a company car, he's in his own car. Now, what difference does that make? None. No difference. Of course not. That's the big thing, if not the biggest thing, for those of us in the telephone company to remember. You know, we can be mighty proud of the fact that the Bell system has one of the most outstanding safety records, and has had for a long time. But the only way we can keep that record is to work at it. Work hard to make it even better. When the public sees this Bell system sign on one of our cars or trucks, we want them to be able to say, there goes one of the most considerate drivers in town. The trouble is, some of us, when we're off the job, forget and leave our defensive driving know-how in the company garage. And that's why the driver of this car, if he's doing what he's supposed to do, will be just as careful and just as courteous as when he's driving for the company. Now, when all of us do that, we won't be having 20 times as many injuries off the job as we have driving on the job. 20 times as many? That's right. Well, there's not the limit. We know better. Why don't we do better? Think about that, will you? The next time you're out in your car. Tally-ho, everybody! 
everybody. <laughs> Duchess, your pumpkin coat show eights. Oh, Daddy, you mean Cinderella. I mean, get in there. Hey. 250 miles to drive in Saturday traffic. Where's Tommy? He's coming. Grandma will want to hear me play my new bugle. I just bet you, but not on the way up. One toot in your roof. Yes, sir. Slide in there, son. Help check us out. All right, try the lights. Now the brights. Now the directional lights. Okay. Step on the brakes. Stop lights, okay. Give me the tail lights. Directionals again. Okay. The left front tire's a little low. We'll stop for gas and have it checked. We ready to take off, Dad? You bet. Hey, we're just like pilots checking out an airplane, aren't we? Slide over. Just as important with a car as it is with an airplane. Where is everybody going? wonder. Look at that! Sunday drivers are really out today. They're always out. That's one of the things we learn in defensive driving. We not only have to watch out that we don't make any mistakes ourselves, but we have to look out for the other drivers, too. We have to protect ourselves and them, too, if we can. You know, it's a pretty sobering thought, but whenever I, I'm out in traffic and I see those cars whizzing by like that, I say to myself, which ones will it be today? Which ones will be what, Dad? Will be in an accident. One out of seven of those cars will have an accident before the year is out. And that's according to statistics. In the next five years, every one of those drivers will be involved in an accident if he isn't extra careful. And so I always remember that, and I try to be extra careful myself. I don't want us to be one of them. That's dangerous, getting out in traffic like that. Boy, is he mad. The guy behind is too close. You should always keep a buffer zone of space between you and the car ahead. Of course, that driver up ahead was badly at fault, too. The one that came out without stopping. I wonder how a driver like that feels after causing other people trouble and getting away scot-free himself. Pretty small, I bet. Yeah. Wonder what that one is thinking right now. There's some sort of smash-up back there, it seems. Oh, serves them right. Well, the way some people drive. Well, weren't we supposed to stop and get mixed up in that? Well, I, I, I mean at that stop sign on that little street. Oh, that. Oh, I was going to stop. Only when I saw that open place, I slid in quick before somebody else did. Well, it's not my fault that some of those silly drivers were going so fast they couldn't stop. Goodness knows I don't have any accidents. That's got it, mister. The valve was leaking a little, but it's tight now. Thanks. Come on, son. Okay, okay. I got a map so I can watch the road, Dad. Okay, Tommy, you be the co-pilot. Don't tell me. 
What is it, dear? That clunker up ahead there, the one that's holding everybody up, it looks like the same one that caused that pileup back on Broad Street. Did you ever hear so many horrid honkers? Oh, be quiet back there. I'm not going to drive any faster for anybody. I see the speed limit's 35 miles. How fast are we going? We're only going 22. So what? We're in no hurry. It's free country. Have a heart, lady. Get a move on or get over. You mind your own business. But you're holding everybody up back there. Will you kindly watch what you're doing? Don't you worry about me. You just oh. Now he's clear off the road, huh? It never pays to get mad while you're driving. You're inviting an accident when you take time to yell at other drivers. Even if they drive like idiots, it's not up to you to tell them off or to try to get even. Even when they're hogging the road like that car's been doing. If they have to drive slow, there are plenty of places to pull over and let other people pass. Well, the others have been getting around. But it's a very dangerous thing to do, as you just saw. But he stopped arguing with them. The rest got by. Well, suppose he'd met a car that couldn't stop. No, son, you've got to drive as if there's someone coming around every curve and up over every hill. Would you take a chance that there isn't? How much would you bet on it? Your allowance? A hundred dollars? A million dollars? I haven't got a hundred dollars. Well, suppose somebody came along and offered you a million dollars for your life. Would you take it? John, don't even talk like that. Do you mean I'll be dead? Yeah. Not me. I wouldn't take it. All right, then. Your life is worth more than a million dollars, so don't bet it on getting around one car in order to save a couple of minutes. Gamble isn't worth it. The stakes are too high for what you can possibly get out of it, aren't they? Gee. Well, we're next in line anyway. Folks back there are honking at us. See, we have got a long line back there, haven't we? And they can hardly get by until we do. How can those Sunday drivers be so inconsiderate? They've still got a lot of miles to go. They're just out for a buggy ride. Well, why don't we go back to shore drive? It's too far. There's a shortcut along here pretty quick. If they just move over a little bit further now. It won't be crowded like this. It's a dirt road. Not a soul uses it. There's a sign. A road's just around the bend. Maybe I'll take it, maybe I won't. Yes, how I remember every awful detail. I pull out to pass. The other car swings right. It's too dusty. Then change it. I live it again and again, like in slow motion. We're gonna hit! Oh, God. They found my lifeless body. They found my son crumpled and unconscious from hitting his head on the windshield. Helen and Kathy shaken and stunned. It isn't fair to die for such a little thing. That wasn't my fault. I wasn't ready to die. Besides, who's going to take care of my family? I'm the one who does that. And right now is when they need me the most. That's what fathers are for. Don't do that. Don't move that boy until the doctor comes. Where is the doctor? Has anyone sent for him? Kathy's down. 
poor Susie. But it's only a doll. Don't, don't just stand there. Go to a phone. Call a doctor for Tommy. Call an ambulance. There's Helen and Kathy. Thank God they're not hurt any worse than they are. But who's going to look out for them? That's the horrible thing about an accident. It doesn't just end here. Look at that car. Helen's never had to handle anything like this by herself. Now she's out here in the middle of nowhere. What's she going to do? What are she and the children going to do from now on without me? What's going to become of them? Well, I found out the home was breaking up. The home that had been the center of our world, our happy world, the four of us. And Helen, bless her heart, the sweetest person in the world, but not prepared to cope with things. Things like keeping the rest of the family together, moving up to where her mother lives, meeting Tommy's doctor bills. Hello. How are you, Miss Griswold? How is Tommy? Just about the same. I'm on my way over there right now. Well, he'll be better. I'm sure he will. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Poor thing. Her little boy's been in a coma for over a month. No. Never regained consciousness after the accident. Well, where is he now? Still in the hospital. Oh, my son, my son, what have I done to you? And to Mom and Kathy. Oh. Oh, Tommy. Mm-hmm. What? Dad? Dad, is that you? Yes, Tommy. It's me. Where you been? I've been around. Do you remember the accident? Sure. We bid on it, after all. We lost, didn't we? Yes, son, we lost. But it wasn't my fault, you know that, don't you? That's why I came back. I had to be sure you understood. You do understand, don't you, Tommy? The other car was going so slow and the horns were honking behind us and I, I thought we could get around, but the other car swerved over and suddenly the truck was there. It was too much to bet, wasn't it, Dad? Yes, son. Yes, it was. Oh, poor Tommy. Stay with your mother. She needs you. Hello, Miss Giddings. Is it all right if I go in and see Tommy for a minute? Thank you. So dark in here. Darling, what have I done? What have I done? Oh, no, Tommy. No, no, don't. Please don't. In my baby. Please don't. 